Well, welcome to a new Team CGC 9.8 video. Today's video, I wanted to talk about a short list of seven of my most nostalgic CGC 9.8 comic books to invest in. So, I think for everyone out there, this, you know, it's a subjective list. So, it's going to be different for everyone out there, sort of based on, you know, when you grew up and what's most nostalgic to you, what you really liked as a kid. And, you know, I've always said on this channel a lot, like, I really... You know, rather than going out there and buying, like, the best investment grade book, I uh, really go out there and just kind of buy what I love and buy what I'm most nostalgic for. And a lot of that time, that's 80s and 90s books. And then, you know, it's still in my budget to kind of get the CGC 9.8. So that's kind of how I got to, you know, where I'm at now. But, um, you know, got a short list here with some honorable mentions. And I think, you know, a great way to sort of... Um, you know, for investment grade books of this era, a great thing to do is buy really, really nostalgic books, I think, because, um, you know, those feelings of nostalgia is really what's going to, like, drive someone to buy the book and drive demand and drive prices in the very, you know, the long term I'm thinking here. So, yeah, I think nostalgia, rather than overthinking things and re being really picky and things like that, a lot of the times it's just best to go with those awesome nostalgic key issues from, you know, whatever area you collect in. And obviously for us, for, uh, you know, Team CGC 9.8 here, really, like, kind of late 70s, 80s, 90s is, you know, sort of what we stick to. So, I have a short list of, you know, my most nostalgic comics. It's going to be different for everyone. In 1995, you know, I was 10 years old, and that was really when comic books were new to me, and I loved the art, and I was drawing a lot back then, and, um, you know, Spawn, and McFarlane, and all those 80s books, too, that were up on the wall, usually, you know, they were like 40 bucks maybe, and like, wow, $40, like, you know, Amazing Spider-Man 300 and First Carnage and things like that. So, I will get into all of my most no nostalgic comics, and yeah, nostalgic books are really great investment grade books, I think, from the 80s and 90s. Uh, so, I want to start off with one that's kind of right off the radar, so, but a really nostalgic book for me. It's uh, Detective Comics 525. And for me, this book is, it, it was always to me like the coolest Batman cover I ever saw as a kid. And, you know, I didn't see too many Batman books as a kid, you know, no internet, and you just kind of see what's at your local shop. And so, remember I saw this one and really, really liked it. And then growing up and there's internet and things like that, you do more research. Still, this is probably the best Batman cover of this era, I think. Um... Not really a super key issue, so, um, you know, we're two issues after Detective Comics 523, which is the uh, first cameo of Killer Croc. I got that one, too, and that's a great one to get in the 9.8. This one, just as cool to get, to. So, just look on the census here. There's 38 in the CGC 9.8 in the blue label. So, 38, one of 38 out here. Really special for this one, too. I bought this one off eBay in the raw, looking pristine, um, you know, kind of... I guess paid up for it for like how this issue is, but you know, the, it was from a reputable seller and he graded it at solid 9.6 to 9.8. Sent it into CGC of uh, one of the things I sent in, came back 9.8 white, white pages, one of 38 out there. So yeah, kind of happy to kind of get one of those 38s out there to the planet. CGC 9.8 ratio, 37%. So that's actually, it's just such an underfollowed book. There's not a lot graded. So I can see why that's not really low. So it's not kind of relatively rare. But for me, my most pretty much nostalgic Batman cover from when I was young, even though it's not like a real, a real key issue or anything. And yeah, what's cool, pretty affordable in the CGC 9.8. Um, you know, obviously I kind of got this one graded myself and everything, but I've seen sort of 100 to 150 on this issue. I think people are paying about 150 American for this book. Um, you know, if kind of a reputable seller with good scans pops up, looks really good, perfect case. Um, but if it pops up in an auction, someone's really motivated to sell pretty fast, you might get lucky and get it towards 100. Just because not a lot of people are really searching for this book specifically, so it could slip under the radar at a decent price. So, yeah, the CGC 9.8, one to get. And for me, honestly, just for the nostalgic connection, I really want another one, actually. It's kind of realizing that doing the research for this video kind of... Like I want another, uh, I want another Detective Comics 525. So, yeah, such a great cover and it's affordable. Like, yeah, I almost can't miss with that one. So next, very very nostalgic book for me is uh, Amazing Spider-Man 316. Todd McFarlane Venom cover, pretty much the first Venom cover. Like the issue before this, 
Venom's face is on it, but this is like basically the first cool Venom cover. A very sort of go-to issue for, uh, you know, Venom fans, Todd McFarlane fans, with Amazing Spider-Man 300 kind of being out of most people's price range in the 9.8. This one's just really a, a go-to uh, Amazing Spider-Man book for Venom fans, and one I would recommend too, for sure. On, on the census, though, there's 873 CGC 9.8s in the blue label, 873 of them. I got two of them in the CGC 9.8, so... Yeah, and, uh, you know, the, there's quite a bit of them, so I, I like to have the centering really nice down the spine, no pages sticking out the side. Kind of be picky on centering with this one. There's quite, there's quite a lot of them out there, so... 29% uh, CGC 9.8 ratio, so not super, super rare. You know, the lower the better, so of all graded copies, 29% of them are CGC 9.8s. So not too, too rare, but... Um, a super nostalgic cover. I mean, this one, for me, yeah, it's more nostalgic for me over Amazing Spider-Man 300. I think, you know, 300 was always really expensive. This one seemed more attainable, and even for me as a kid, for some reason, I never really saw these very much. And um, it was just, like, elusive to me for some reason, being young, and uh, didn't see very many of them, just sort of when I did, it was just wide-eyed amazingness, so just loving uh, the classic McFarlane Venom cover. And yeah, now, um, you know, on a really good price, if you're really patient in an auction, you get this for like $250, $240. Um, you know, with kind of this McFarlane Signature Series event and things like that, like some McFarlane fans seem to be coming out of the closet, which is cool. Um, but uh, I saw one of these go for like $330 something in an auction. So that's kind of almost like a bidding war starting for, for it, I think, like a nicely centered one for like $330. So that's like the top of the range. Whereas if you're patient, uh, 250, 240 in an old case, even like maybe closer to 200 in an old case. Great nostalgic cover up for um, yeah. If you're a Venom fan, Spider-Man fan, just grab that one, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, next book, spawn number one. Yeah, this one, you know, uh, even though there are so many printed, uh, you know, I am recommending the newsstand version of spawn number one too. If, uh, you know, kind of coming at it from an investment grade perspective, you want to get the newsstand. But, as I said, you know, in 1995, as a 10 year old kid, uh, I didn't really know that it was, there were a million of these printed and everything like that, so it was just a book that I really wanted. And I know, uh, they, yeah, like the spawn number one in the direct version without the UPC code, which is about a hundred bucks in a CGC 9.8 now. Those used to sell for like, you know, $60, $70 back then because it was so, so popular and so wanted in a raw. Um, so, uh, but with Spawn Number One, so, yeah, it, so it was so nostalgic for me. And uh, I thought it was really expensive. I couldn't afford it. I could never track a Spawn Number One down, honestly, when I was uh, 10 years old in 1995. So, one I wanted to get when I got back into the CGC collecting. So, for the newsstand, um, if you look on the census, there's 5,277 CGC 9.8s in the blue label. So that's newsstands and directs all lumped into one. So, you know, kind of a conservative estimate I like to do is 5% of those 9.8s are probably uh, newsstand CGC 9.8s. So, um, yeah, I think that brings it, you know, it's like 260-something of these if you do 5% of that number. So, um uh, I, I, I suspect it to be a little bit higher than that, probably closer to 500 of these out there in the new stand version, CGC 9.8. Yeah, but it's more rare. The directs, I, again, are 100. Um, price for this book, a good deal is like 400 bucks. Under Like anything under 400, I think, is a really good deal because, yeah, you do see a lot of these sell for like 429.99, um, even over 450 for sure, too, for a nice one. Uh, you, see that, you see those sell. So, yeah, the, sort of the range is like, you know, just under 400. I paid like 375 for mine uh, with good shipping to Canada, so it was, it was under 400 to kind of get it to Canada. Um, so I think that's a really good deal if you could track one down. But people are paying over 400 for this. In the new stand, more rare. This is kind of the one the collectors want. So uh, great nostalgic cover for me, as I said. Being 10 years old in 1995, which was, I was a little late for Spawn. Like, Spawn, you know, Spawn 1 came out uh, 92. It was, yeah, 92. So, um, you know, kind of really getting into collecting into 95 and being 10 years old. So, uh, you know, Spawn 1 was a couple years behind still. So it was very, like, wanted. And, um, you know, I think at that time, like, Spawn 25, Spawn 30, like, those were the issues that were coming up. So, 
<laughs> it's such a nostalgic book, and I think in the newsstand version, really recommend it as an investment grade book. Uh, next one here. Got Uncanny X Men number one forty one. Yeah, this is Days of Future Past number one. You get the first appearance of Rachel, who's the second Phoenix, and uh, such a classic storyline. Days of Future Past and a classic cover for me too. Yeah, I was lucky to pick this one. This is one I hunted for for a really long time in um, this uh, newsstand one. And yeah, the reason I was really waiting for the newsstand is uh, brought out. Uh, yeah. 142 I had in the newsstand before the 141, so I wanted to get a 141 in the newsstand to match. And I mean, this is just 100% nostalgia for me right now. I always uh, look back and really, really wanted these books when I was younger, but really couldn't really afford them, and uh, just uh, really liked um, the X-Men animated series, the Days of Future Past that they did, even though it was really, really different, to be honest, like Gambit was in it and everything, but... Um, so it was a lot different than this than the actual read of this book, but um, really just like the Days of Future Past story. And yeah, let's look on the census for this one. It's a really great investment grade book. It looks really good on the census. Uh, 597 CGC 9.8 on the blue label, and 14.5% um, is the CGC 9.8 ratio. So, you know, anything under 20 is pretty rare. And uh, for this being such a cool key, plus pretty rare too. Um, yeah, I think it's, you know, a great, just nostalgic X-Men book to get. Because, yeah, once you get into this era, uh, the books get really expensive. You have the Byrne, John Byrne era in the CGC 9.8, so they really get expensive, especially if they're key issues. Even the non-key issues are very expensive, so. Uh, yeah, and talking about price for this book, uh, for the new stand version, I paid 400 even for this. And um, I think that's a pretty fair price, to be honest, yeah. A lot of times you see some of these pop up for like five twenty five, buy it now, you know, five fifty, buy it now, like in the newsstand. Um, direct versions, I've seen pretty much three fifty in auctions. I've seen even go under three fifty. So um, yeah, but for the more rare newsstand for this one, about you know four hundred, maybe under four hundred if you're really lucky, but um, a little more rare, so a little more wanted by collectors in the newsstand. To match my one forty two in the newsstand, it's almost like a dream come true. Because yeah. For some reason, these these covers, these two covers, really just stuck out to me when I was when I was a kid from X Men books, and I always just liked even the Uncanny X Men. Like I don't know, it's just uh, the word Uncanny with X Men was really cool to me as a kid. And for, yeah, again, these covers really stuck out. And you know, all these years later, all these years later, I think they're really great investment grade books. Yeah, especially in the CGC nine point eight, like a one of five hundred ninety seven in the world. Like that's pretty cool. So, uh, next book. Yeah, this one here. We saw it. Amazing Spider Man 431. So, um, this is the kind of the first appearance of Cosmic Carnage, I guess you could say. Even though right here it just says Carnage and Silver Surfer appearance. So, I don't think they really officially, you know, make uh, this like a new uh, thing. <laughs> but uh, considering, like, there's like Cosmic Ghost Rider and things like that now, this is almost like the first. Uh, you know, take on uh, that without it even really being known at the time. But a great cover, fantastic cover. This, yeah, for me, you know, again, being 1995, 96, 97, really when I really collected comic books. And I bought, I had some Amazing Spider, I was buying like Amazing Spider-Man, like Peter Parker Spider-Man uh, books, like weekly usually back then if I had extra money kind of thing. And uh, yeah, when this book came out, it was awesome. And uh I don't think, yeah, so I don't really remember buying it off the news, the newsstand kind of thing at the shop, so I might have missed it on that week, but uh, I know a friend that had it, and you know, when your friend kind of has it, uh, sometimes you get really jealous, and I think that was, that was kind of my situation, I was just jealous of my friend who had a really, really nice one, and uh, so I, I knew when I got back into the game and, um, you know, buying CGC 9.8, so I really wanted this book, super nostalgic cover, 90s book, late 90s book, so there's actually... You know, not too, too many of them out there. There's 177 in the CGC 9.8 to this book. Yeah, 45.8% CGC 9.8 ratio. So of all graded copies, 45.8% of them are uh, CGC 9.8s. But just a great cover. And I think, yeah, you know what? Like, just kind of realizing this now, talking on the video, like uh, considering Cosmic Ghost Rider, how well that's done. 
Um, this could be a bit of a spec as like the first cosmic takeover of something, you know, cosmic <laughs> cosmic carnage. Um, and it's even kind of cooler because it's like a symbiote. So maybe uh, based on that speculative uh, sort of how some other cosmic first appearances have really taken off, uh, this could go up in price. Because yeah, so talking about price, I, I got mine, I'm pretty sure it was like 160. I'm not, I'm not positive on it, I didn't look before the video. I think it was like closer to 150, 160-ish. Uh, in an auction, saw one of these go for like 200. Like it was like 198. Um, and then I remember right after that auction, there was another buy it now on the internet for 199.99. And then that was purchased like right after the auction. So like someone lost out on the auction and then bought, you know, this one, the same book for like three bucks more or whatever it was, I think. Uh, so about 200 bucks. I have seen this go for in an auction. So I think that's a decent deal for it. And uh, yeah, with only 177 out there, I think every now and then, because these aren't on eBay very much, like I think, I don't know if you look right now, there's probably not one of these on eBay. Um, but a lot of times there's not, so when one pops up, a bidding war could, you know, break out. So yeah, 200 fair price. If you're really patient, closer to 150. Uh, great nostalgic cover, 90s cover for me, again, kind of being in that time frame for me where... Sort of, uh, yeah, this book coming out in early 1998, so I was, yeah, actively collecting back then. All right, uh, next book here, where is it? Okay, move some books around off here off camera, because I got quite a few out. Yeah, so next one, uh, kind of in the era for me, so it's almost obvious I gotta have this book on the list. I mean, it's Spider-Man 361, first full appearance of Carnage. Uh, first print brought the newsstand one out. I do have a direct one, direct and the newsstand. Yeah, really, you know, I guess super nostalgic for me, this cover. I think this is the best 1990s cover, too, personally. Um, I think over time it will become sort of, you know, more appreciated. But uh, just super classic pose. There's even some real cool homages that sell really well of this, too. So, yeah, for me, the coolness, the nostalgia, this is probably top top nostalgia coolness book of the 90s, maybe. Because, you know, I think for New Mutants 98, it sort of gained prominence based on, like, the Deadpool movie. So it's not... I don't think that book's super nostalgic for most kids back then, but um, this one was. Like, <laughs> you know, Carnage was so cool. Um, look on the census quick. Uh, 3,408. So many of them out there that kind of, you know, shows the popularity of Carnage. Um, and also an early 90s book, so pretty much from 1990 to 1993 was like the peak of comic book printing. So this is 1992. So you, you get that in these this sort of era of 1990s books with it being so popular, 3,408 CGC 9.8s in the blue label this morning on the census. 27% is the CGC 9.8 ratio. So, you know, pretty relatively rare actually for, but you know, there's so many of them, so... You know, I, I do say you like to see that under 20, but for an early 90s book, it's not too bad. But um, <laughs> super nostalgic, just 100% nostalgia for, uh, you could, you know, I definitely had to include it for, uh, you know, growing up in my era. And uh, yeah, talk about price really quick. So this is a newsstand version. You know, you get lucky on these that you can get one for close to 350, but for the most part, kind of 400-ish for a newsstand version. Uh, direct version 350, you get really lucky, even closer to 300. I've, you know, heard, you know, direct versions of this, maybe not centered the best, going for like $300, pretty much. Um, but, you know, I do recommend, because there's 3,000 of them out there, you know, uh, be picky on centering for this book. You know, get one where the spine's nicely centered on, uh, down the sides, and, you know, no pages sticking out the side, so then, you know, you get a perfect 9.8, and... Because there's 3,000 of them out there, you can be patient, and there's always new ones popping up on eBay to bid on and stuff like that. So, you know, you wait a month or two, and you'll get a really nice, perfect centered one, and I think you'll, you'll, wanna, you'll be happier with that. But, again, yeah, the 90s cover for me. Honorable mention, uh, really quick, because, uh, uh, you know, Amazing Spider-Man is such a, such a great cover. Uh, 362, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 362 and 363 arguably for me were even more nostalgic and I think it's just because I saw them more when I was younger um, you know whereas this one was probably really wanted and got sniped pretty fast at local comic shops um, there just always seemed to be a couple 362s and 363s in the bin that I saw and those are really great covers if you really like symbiotes you know as a kid as a 10 year old kid really loving symbiotes 
those are really nostalgic covers too. And they're about, you know, you get a good deal on those in the CGC 9.8. They're like 75, 80 bucks, 90 bucks. Maybe for a really nice one, 90 bucks to 100 in the uh, CGC 9.8 for 362 and 363. Our 362 is a little bit more expensive, I think, actually. 363, about 90 ish. 362, like 125, maybe even getting a little over that. Second appearance, second appearance of Carnage. Uh, yes, yeah, such a great cover. So, one I would recommend, even though it's an early 90s book, and there's quite a lot of them out there. Um, okay, last one. Yeah, last one on the list, but I got some honorable mentions I will go through a bit quick, too, so. Yeah, so last one on the list is an Incredible Hulk 340. And, uh, yeah, you know, uh, for me, a, a really nostalgic cover. I think uh, being a Wolverine fan, a fan of, like, X-Men animated series and uh, growing up and loving uh, reading X-Men comics, and they were so popular, too, in the early 90s, X-Men comics, but... Um, and then being a Todd McFarlane fan, yeah, th I, you know, it was really close between kind of this and Batman 423. Um, you can always kind of go either way. They're very similar priced to very similar kind of CGC 9.8 ratios and everything, but great. This is a great investment, great book. Um, yeah, look on the census really quick. There's 686 CGC 9.8s in the blue label. So it's really popular. So 686 kind of seems like a lot, but, um, it's uh, not too, too bad for how popular the book is. 14.2% is the CGC 9.8 ratio. So yeah, pretty great 9.8 ratio for like a late 80s book, under 20, um, you know, under 15 even. Yeah, quite relatively rare for like a 1988 book. And that's kind of the reason why it's pretty expensive too. So over 400 for this now, uh, especially for a nice one. You might get it under 300 or under 400 uh you know, if there's some pages sticking out the side or if the centering's a bit off, because, um, yeah, for this one, I'll mention on, you know, past uh, videos and things like that, the uh, McFarlane Y check signature here, um, if it's not centered right, they're kind of curling around the spine, that can kind of affect the value, like, you know, 10 to 20% in a CGC 9.8, when you can't really see the McFarlane signature clearly and fully, it's like curled around the spine that way. Um, so yeah, I might be able to get this book for like, under 400, maybe pretty much like 350-ish. Um, but a nicely centered one, and I've, I've gotten quite picky on centering with this one. Um, yeah, I got kind of like three really, really nice ones. Um, they're, uh, yeah, like 425 in auctions right now. Uh, yeah, I saw a lot of them kind of go in the past couple months for about that price. But uh, for that price, yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, Hulk Wolverine. It's the second time they ever fight. So this is kind of, for me, the go-to sort of alternative in the uh, Copper Age for, like, Hulk 181 fans. And, yeah, I think it kind of stands alone now at this point on its own. And the CGC 9.8, uh, yeah, there's quite a thriving market. It's really wanted and super nostalgic book uh, for me. And, uh, yeah, I think, you know, given the CGC 9.8 ratio is pretty low and... Second time Hulk and Wolverine ever fight with the classic McFarlane artist in cover. Um, homage a lot of times, too. Like, that, yeah, that's a really great investment one. I recommend it. Yeah, and I actually, I have four. Yeah, four CGC 9.8s. That's the one I have the most. So probably is, you know, based on that, if you're buying the, the ones that you think are the best investments, that's probably the best one for me. So, okay, that's the short list of seven. So let's get into some honorable mentions. And um, because we just did... Hulk 340. Gonna move a couple books around here quick. Really quickly here, Wolverine number eight is, I think, uh, almost more nostalgic for me. Uh, you know, saw these a lot in kind of comic book bins growing up, and I had, you know, had a couple uh, of raw copies personally when I was, you know, growing up too. It was one I did have a couple of, and yeah, I always wanted a 9.8 in it, and this is one. About 120 ish uh, is kind of the fair market value, I would say. And, you know, maybe if Hulk 340 is not in your budget, that's another kind of Copper Age go to Hulk Wolverine cover. That's really nostalgic for me and I think for a lot of other people. So, yeah, I think over time that'll do really well too. Okay, next one here. Save that one. Uh, 
Yeah, this book's interesting because uh, recommended in the past, but really nostalgic for me. Batman 366. Yeah, and uh, I think for me, you know, I've always liked Batman, and, um, you know, growing up, I used to sort of think naively that this was kind of like a one off, because uh, usually Batman comics are like Batman, you know, like it's. So I remember seeing this, and it just always stuck out, and I always. You know, I kind of just thought it was different and almost weird when I was younger, but, um, you know, growing up and then realizing it's a key issue and um, just really started to really like the cover. And you do get its a first appearance of Jason Todd in the Robin costume, but a classic Joker cover by Walt Simonson. So he, since then, has done a lot of other Joker covers that are really cool. He's got a really classic looking Joker. So, uh, yeah, and this one's in the newsstand version, too. So, this is, yeah, pretty rare book, this one. And uh, for me, super nostalgic. This is kind of my Batman nostalgia pick. I, you know, I kind of prefer this over Batman 357. And I'm kind of convinced, too, that I think it sells better than Batman 357. There's always a lot of 357s on the internet. And I think I can understand that. When I sort of got into Batman collecting, I never really was uh, really pumped about that cover. 357, even though it is the main key for his Jason Todd, it is a great book to have. I do have one now. Ended up grabbing one, but um, uh, I, I pr I've always sort of preferred Batman and kind of grown to prefer Batman 366. And yeah, you don't see these very often, and then when you do see them, they get sniped pretty fast, especially if they're priced uh, sort of reasonably. And yeah, you know, price on this one, if you get really lucky, maybe under 200 bucks. But um, you know, I would think most buy it nows, and this would be sort of like at least 200 and kind of 225 even 250 to 300 certainly in the newsstand even more as well so um yeah i have one in the newsstand and one in the direct too cgc 9.8 white pages yeah great batman book to get from uh that sort of sort of limited print batman run from 357 to uh, like 401 it was really limited print batman sort of compared to like marvel and superman dc books of the time as well and other dc books and, okay, last honorable mention, yeah, right here. Only got a raw copy of it, but very nostalgic cover for me. Uncanny X-Men 266. Yeah, I got a really nice raw copy of that. I've had this one for a really long time. Um, I don't, I don't, I might have bought it in the 90s, like, like when I was, you know, 10. Like, I, I don't remember buying it, to be honest, but, so it might have been an eBay purchase when I was sort of fiddling around in kind of the late 90s to early 2000s. Um... But, uh, re yeah, really nicely centered. I really like to get this, you know, in a CGC 9.8 if you're looking at it. I like to get it nicely centered. Again, there's a lot of these on the census. Uh, early, being an early 90s book, I think it's like 2000-something-something. I didn't look because it was just honorable mention. But um, a lot of these out there. So be picking on that centering uh, and try to get, you know, if you're getting a 9.8 white page, try to be picking on the centering. For these early 90s books, um, yeah, this one does have good centering. It, it does have a black cover, so if you just get that perfect little bit of black kind of right down the spine with no pages sticking up the side, that's what you're kind of looking for. Yeah, first full appearance, Gambit. Good kind of speculation on, uh, you know, Gambit being in some new MCU movies with uh, X-Men coming back to the MCU. So, yeah, there's that. And uh, I just say, yeah, really cool Andy Kubert cover. Um Yep, and, uh, you know, I don't have it in the CGC 9.8, um, and I think for me, yeah, because I'm a bit pickier on the centering, I, especially with uh, early 90s books for me, um, you know, 80s books, I'm not as bad, you know, I, I don't mind an off-centered kind of 80s book, to be honest, not, you know, too, too much, but, um, or even like a 70s book or whatever, if it's a 9.8 white pages, it's, you know, that's it. But uh, with early 90s books, I do tend to be a little more picky, and it just seems all the auctions I've ever saw for this were, like, off-centered or had, like, you know, a little bit of the black showing and the back, or, like, maybe it was just, you know, the spine centering just wasn't that good. So, uh, never kind of came across a perfect one that I really wanted to bid on, but I'm sure at some point I will grab a CGC 9.8 of this book. Because, yeah, really nostalgic for me, and obviously I bought one back then, so, yeah, it's a great key to have, too. Okay, that's going to be it for uh, the list here. Got, yeah, a full list of seven. And, um, yeah, I'll, I'll put the list in the description below, too. Yeah, it was Detective Comics 525, this one here. Amazing Spider-Man 316, first cool Venom cover. Spawn number one in the newsstand version. Uh, Uncanny X-Men 141. 
Days of Future Past Part 1, yeah, really classic cover. Cosmic Carnage, yeah, really late 90s classic cover. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 361, first full appearance of Carnage, the best 90s cover for me. And Hulk 340, maybe one of the best 80s covers, um, and uh, the second time Hulk and Wolverine ever fight. Yeah, I'll put a list of uh, all the books in the description below. So, concluding up, just, um, you know, looking at the list, got the whole list, and, um, you know, the two books with the lowest CGC 9.8 ratio, so they're the most rare, are Uncanny X-Men 141 and Hulk 340. And I think, you know, if you're looking for, a, you know, two books with, like, great nostalgia and a great combination of, like, nostalgia and rarity, you know, I think these two books are, are awesome investment grade books, especially for the money. They're not, like, too, too expensive for, like, legit investment grade books. Um, you know, Uncanny X-Men being about 350 in the direct, I think, is a good deal. Uncanny X-Men 141, Hulk 340, you know, 425 uh, in the direct. The newsstands for Hulk 340 are elusive, and they I've seen them go for, like, over $600, uh, even over that, I believe, over 700 So... Uh, yeah, those, those would be my sort of, uh, you know, highlights and top recommendations out of the full list. Yeah, Uncanny X-Men 141, Days of Future Past Part 1, and Incredible Hulk 340. Yeah, the second time ever Wolverine and Hulk fight, and it took over 10 years for them to fight again. So, yeah, Hulk 340 is pretty special. All right, so, yeah, so hopefully you got some ideas here, and just, you know, talking about again, I think, uh, a lot of times in comic books, sometimes... You want to be eclectic, and you want to like look at the senses a lot, and you want to try to find really, really, really rare stuff. But a lot of times, it's just best to think really simply and think like, what's the most nostalgic sort of thing that would compel like a, a sort of noob or a new buyer to go out and you know buy a book? And nostalgia is a big part of that. It's just you know um, those really classic key issues. From your, you know, rather like your friend had it back in the day and you were, je you were jealous of them, which was a couple of these issues for me that made me really nostalgic and really, really wanted the book. Or, you know, there's so many, you know, stories for why a book can be nostalgic to you. But I think it's a great way to go to like find, to get a list of some books to buy. Like just, you know, again, rather than being thinking about it too much from too, you know, from, you know, rarity perspectives and this and that, like, you know, don't think about all that stuff, just think about what's really nostalgic, what was really cool when, you know, during the age that you grew up, because that's what you would know the best, and then I think over time, you know, those feelings generate demand, and then they, the prices go up more so than, you know, other comic books that don't really have a nostalgic connection for the most part. And, and then, yeah, the last thing too, like, this is a subjective list, like, What's nostalgic to me might not be nostalgic to someone else because, you know, they had a different comic shop when they were growing up, like so many different factors of, you know, what you saw. And I grew up before, you know, I was really collecting kind of before the internet, basically, so you couldn't just do a bunch of research and learn everything about a run of comics, so it's like sort of what you saw, so it's very kind of a niche thing, I guess. So, uh, okay, that'll be enough for the video. Hope you got some ideas. If you haven't already, I'd invite you to join the team and subscribe to Team CGC 9.8. Hit the bell, get all the latest notifications, and add me on Instagram and Twitter, too. Um, yeah, I'll have all the links in the description below for that. But yeah, sweet list of uh, my most nostalgic comics. And yeah, nostalgia is, for me, like, I just buy what I love, buy what I'm most nostalgic for, and don't really think about too much other than, you know, maybe looking on the census a little bit. I'm a bit of a census uh, snob, I guess, uh, trying to find some rare 9.8s. But besides that nostalgia and buy what you love and almost can't go wrong but thank you very much for watching today really appreciate all the support all the comments uh message me on instagram if you'd like to talk about anything comic books uh, yeah i love a lot of the message i'm getting from the team on instagram thank you very much for watching today though i'll see you on the next one